Now, our afternoon play takes us back to 1801 and to a gruesome chapter in the history of the Smalls Lighthouse, after which lighthouses would never again be manned by a crew of only two. A dark tale of love and betrayal, the Pelé imagines what might have happened on that desolate rock 20 miles off the Welsh coast. Paul Rees and even Hugh Daffeth star in The Lighthouse by Alan Harris. <laughs> I'm not trying to shift the blame. There's enough of that for all of us. But I'm going to tell you it all. I have to tell you it all. I have to make you understand, and if you understand, that might lead you to... I can hardly believe it was just six weeks ago that I stepped onto the black rock of the Smalls. My first sight from the boat beggared belief. A more curious structure never witnessed. Sat atop nine oaken pillars, a small living quarter below a lamp room. Below that, a bunker lashed to the rock for supplies. A lighthouse 20 miles from land, at the mercy of the Irish Sea. Some might say a God-forsaken place. As I stood there on the jetty, Waving away the two relieved keepers, I had an uneasy feeling that I should not be here. I should not be here, and most of all, not here alone with him. Ah, by the time we get these stores housed. <sighs> Sea's getting up, Griffith. And I think the wind has turned, yes? You permanently on half speed. No, all right. What was flat home? Ten years ago, it seemed he had not changed in appearance or manner. Let the lazy devils left the quarters in a right state. I hope the trip back to Milford is smooth. God help them. <laughs> is this thing safe? Wouldn't have left nothing in there. We'll have to haul up everything. When Mr. Talbot said it was constructed of timber, well, I imagined a, a solid structure, but this, like a petrified wooden octopus. An octopus. <laughs> well, I was just wondering how they built. Listen so to me, they... Thomas Howell. I'm not in the middle of the Irish Sea to socialize with you or make small talk. I'm here to do my duty, keep the light, pass my month, and return to dock. Yes. Understand? We might not like each other, well, but we've that's what make... stop us from doing our duty. Less jabber, more hauling. I want these supplies up top. Quick, smart. A whole month on a reef the size of a cabbage patch with principal keeper Thomas Griffith. Oh, joy of joys. Oh, keep pushing. Oh. Ah. <coughs> you up from the whole boy. Well, it's not so easy going backwards. I'm the weight of it. Is it rather? Maybe we should lift this past my step. I've got it! And up! Just one more! Oh, got it! Oh, that was a big one. A big swell. Well, it's not too bad in here, is it? They left it ship shape. Well, it moves a lot, doesn't it? He thinks that's a swell. <laughs> that's your half of the room. This, mine. Yours is yours. Mine is mine. It's understood. What's that? Grog? Well, it's port. I thought we might share a glass to toast our, our reunion. Devil's in that bottle. You don't fancy a top, then? Get that letter! Acts of a sinful nature will prohibit a person from inheriting the kingdom of God. Wine is as good as life to a man if it be drunk and moderately. You're not the only one who can quote the good book, Griffith. I see you're as clever as ever. I write I shouldn't be here. 
I was due for another posting at St. B's, but uh, when the service calls, us keepers... You're still have... an assistant keeper. Someone's got to be. Still an assistant keeper since... How is flat home? You still live there? Remember, Mary always said it was the least flat home she'd ever seen. Right. Sorry I had to leave so suddenly. Mary! Is she well? Well, you've been skulking for the past ten years. <laughs> All cosy shore postings, no doubt. But after I left your and Mary's not-so-flat home, <laughs> I went to St. Bede's, On shore. St. Anne's, On shore. the Scaries, On shore. Point Linus, On shore. Casquettes, Ha! Rock! Don't call that rock. <laughs> but a mile from Alderney, I could swim further in a proper heavy swell in my proper heavy boots. You're on the smalls now, boy. Proper offshore. You think that was a swell? That might be a swell on the scaries of St. Bees or caskets. But that ain't nothing on the smalls. What was that? The old man. What? That's what they call him. Some say this rock is haunted by the souls of those who have perished on it. It's certainly most unpleasant if you find yourself below at the bunker on the reef. And the old man calls out. I reckon it's just boulders, but... Some reckon this reef is haunted. Down there, a sloshing pit of dead souls. All waiting to rise up and destroy us that fail to keep them safe. <laughs> It's getting dark. I'm darker it will get. Your hands, Griffith. You still suffer with the stiffness? Nothing wrong with my hands. But it they looks do like... what needs to be done. Now, your duties. I know my duties. Bring up plenty of whale oil, coal, and fresh water from down below. Can you do that or not? Ah, I see you blisters. There's nothing wrong with my hands either. Wager they're not used to hard work. Now, the light. Trim the main burners with cotton wick, yes. filling each hole with two or three threads, according to the crystal of your cotton. We busied ourselves for ten days, making good this and that, cleaning the windows, the reflectors, the lamp, trimming the wick, bringing up whale oil and supplies from the bunker down below, keeping the light for 18 hours a day in the long winter nights. My only companion, the constant wind, the pounding waves, and if the sea was right, the old man grinding his teeth. Now and again a ship would pass within sight, bringing spices from the east or heavily laden with coal. Captains careful to avoid our flick flickering light. During those days, we hardly said a word to each other. But on the eleventh day, it happened. I shouldn't have had that bath. As I lay there, my head submerged, I thought about what might have been about you, what your life must have been like, and I tried my best, as I'd done so many times over the past ten years, to put those thoughts away in a tight black box concentrating on the cold water I realize now it's no way to live what do you do I always knew we were arrogant but never just, just take stupid. your hands what off me what are you doing I just, but it's get only out. a bar get out get out, get out. I'm sorry. Sick of clearing up your mess. I, I just thought... No, I as ever, you did not. You just did. What do you think we do when the water is gone? Live on rainwater, is that it? We've plenty of water for the month. And when the sea gets up and the relief can't land, hmm? and the next time it's too stormy to even set sail, and the next time... Just the same. Stupid, selfish... Do what I like, Thomas Howard. No, I wasn't going to waste the water. We can use it after to clean the reflectors. Can't we? 
Now, if you don't mind. <sighs> Embarrassed, eh, boy? We're going to get very close, so I wouldn't be shy about a small bit of naked pink flesh. I'm sorry, but still, this, this is a bit offensive, and you have no I right... I've got every right! Life's never how you expect it, is it, boy? You think that something will be a way for the rest of your life, and then you're faced with naked revelation. Cover yourself up. You're right, this is offensive. It's not that small. Life's one big joke for you, isn't it? <laughs> no, it is Mocking me. I'm not Stupid mocking. old Griffith. He'll bring up the water so I can bathe in it, lather myself up and smell so sweet. There are no ladies on this rock for you to charm. No women for you to seduce and corrupt. <laughs> Stupid old Griffith, he won't mind. I have never... Can you see them? What? Is that why you smirk? I, I, I need to get dry. It's cold. I've worn these horns for ten years because of you. What, horns? I, no, no, no. I, I don't know what you mean. A cuckold and a cuckoo sat in the same nest. I don't know what you think, but Mary would never... <laughs> You're not fit to say her name. <laughs> In every garden, there's a snake, but you can't slither away from this rock. You know, you don't wear the horns of a cuckold Thomas Griffith, but of a dull bull charging around blind. I know you can tell that you're hurting me. Damn you! I'm sorry. These just, hands... Just, you're mad! The, the light. Why it, did you do this? It needs attending. It's my duty. Oh. Griffith! Oh. Griffith? Oh. Griffith, Griffith. Can, can you hear me, Griffith? You've taken a bit of a tumble. That's all. Shh, Thomas. Save your breath. You took her away from me. Thomas? For all the perils he faced, breakers the size of churches, swells to churn butter, dangers that only a keeper knows, he succumbed to a bar of soap. If it means anything to you, he died on January the 15th, 1801. I swear it was an accident. How we fall when we are least expecting it. My first thought was not of him, but of you. I saw a chance to return. But I convinced myself once again that thought had to be locked away for well, there were more practical concerns. Time for some fresh air, Griffith. I was frightened. A time away, two keepers who share some past but not a companionship, and then one dies, no witnesses. To leave the body inside, impossible. And to commit it to Davy Jones would be asking for trouble. So, I constructed a coffin from his bed and lashed it to the outside rail of the lighthouse. And there it was to remain until the relief, just 19 days away. Rest easy in your bed, Griffith. The following night, while Griffith hung from the rail, I got about the duties, replacing an old board here, a wooden strut there, but in my brain there was a surge, an unstoppable fancy rolling up and into the forefront of my mind. As the light shone on the water, the 
the day crystal clear. It's as if I could see all the way back to Wales. To you. I was drawn to his trunk, I approached his possessions with caution, for there might be something. A letter or keepsake or a picture. Mary. A picture of you. Sitting in a chair in the belly of the beast with your picture loose in my hand and drifting into a sliver of sleep. I'd measure sleep by the same journey and always woke at the end. From the fat bellied living quarters, I open the wooden shutters and I'm out the window. Across wave after choppy wave, skimming like a swallow over the sea. Twenty miles to Milford, up the beach and past fishermen and hard-working women. Up a track and a lane and a road and over green fields and hedgerows and in a boat across the short stretch of water to Flatholm, past the first row of cottages, the summer heat rising from the rocky path and left and through the blue gate and past the cherry tree and up to the door and... Hello. 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 Oh. A gruesome sight. I don't know how Griffith's arm came loose from his makeshift coffin, but there it hung, sagging outside the window. Gently tap, tapping in the wind, pointing at... Oh, no, the light! The light! I must, I must keep the light. The light had gone out, even though the windows were closed. How can the light go out? I attended the lamp, Griffith's arm still waving in the wind. Now you should wave a bit harder, Griffith. It seems the ships can't see you. Not now, old man. Can't you see I have things to do, I have things to plan? Maybe you can join me in a little sea shanty. We'll pass the time in song. Till I see my Mary once again. Oh, you a pirate or a man of war, great we. Do you know the rest? <gasps> Who's there? Know how it ends? Oh. Griffith? Dreaming of my Mary? No, no, no. I, 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 I... I'll tell you how it ends. The ship it was their coffin, and their grave it was the sea. As the day got darker, I attended the light. I sat next to the lamp, and as my eyelids flutter together and my head begins to nod, I can smell you, rose water and flower. Up to the door, and I'm expecting a man to answer, but you answer. The first time I see your eyes. You smile and invite me in and say your husband is out at sea. A candle sits in the window for him. Your left hand is resting on your hip, and I, I can't tear my eyes away from your red lips as you hum a tune. I long to reach out and touch you. Do you know how a storm starts, Howell? Far out to sea, cold meets warm, and the two clash. Griffith. They cannot abide each other. You cannot hurt me! You sure of that? The ghost of Griffith did not have a shape, but when he spoke, it was as if a thick, putrid wind blew through the lighthouse. I 
can take everything away from you. He moved with the storm. Part of it. If you're quick to the window, you'll see I'm no liar. The bunker? The bunker! The ship it was their coffin. And their grave, it was the sea. Lash it down tight, Howell. Don't want to lose your food, water, oil, coal. Leave it be! An arrogant man ties a shoddy knot. Shut up! I know how to tie a knot! How many times did you sleep with Mary? The ropes will hold. Did you do it while I fished? The bunker is secure. Did you fondle her while I worked? This is just a storm! Did you force her at first, or, or did she lay back and beckon you on? No. Did you look her in the eyes or take her from behind? No. How many times? I never! I know you did. He was the storm. Strong enough to rip the bunker from the rock. To send all my supplies tumbling into the sea. The sea took away my food, Mary. All in one mighty belch fueled by his anger. I ate the bits of food stored in the lighthouse, eked them out, half a biscuit here and there, collected rainwater, just enough, I calculated, till the relief arrived in five days' time. He waited and watched. I could sense it. I kept the light. <laughs> I had one bottle that was not rainwater, mm. and I did not ration that. Acts of a sinful nature will prohibit a person from inheriting the kingdom of God. <laughs> mm. But I've been a good boy. Do you hear me? Uh, do you hear me? On that first morning, I missed Griffith, out too early for me, fishing, and you silently served me my porridge. I can see you reach up, your back arched, as you bring down a pot from your hiding place. You spoon out a lump of jam into the warm food and lick the spoon, bringing your finger to your lips, and instantly we have a little secret. And we talk of precious things, of poems and books. And we walk. And you become more beautiful by the day. What's mine huh? is mine. Oh, oh this, is, this is why you should never work on a rock, on shore work, for Howell from now on. We have to pay for <laughs> our sins. Oh, look ahead, look astern, look the weather in the lee. Blow high, blow low, and so sailed we. The ship, it was their coffin, and the grave, it was the sea. Soon the relief will come and all this madness will be lost. Even in this storm? Well, I've enough oil to keep a good light. How will they land? When they see you out there, waving away, then they'll land, all right. Oh. Why are you doing this to me? I have seen such things, and trust me, Owl. God is a vengeful God. I have nothing to fear. You have no fear? No, I, I didn't say that. You slithered into our garden, oh, up no. to our door, you and took her away from me. I left. You know I did. Never keen on responsibility. No, I, I, I'm not listening to you! It's why you've always been an assistant keeper, not a moral bone in your body. Body. Griffith? I kept the light. I did my duty as best my blistered hands allowed. 
I knew the relief was due the following day. Just one more night to keep the light. Trim the main burners. Taking care that your different wicks be neither too straight in the hole nor... Oh, these hands are not good. I can't even trim a wick. No, boy. Oh, no. Let it wash no, over I'm you. I'm not listening to you. Then listen to the waves. No. How the waves have become lazy and the wind slack. Mm. All is peace and calm and the gannets wheel and dip in harmony with the gull. The clouds move gently to one side. So soft. So polite. And the sun bathes everything in its golden glow. Can you feel the warmth, Howard? Yes. As you let it wash over you. Hmm. You've won, Howard. You'll be home tomorrow safe and warm. Uh -huh. All this will be over. Uh -huh. Sleep, Howard. Uh -huh. And so I slipped my anchor and drifted towards dreams. And at night, on the other side of the thin wall, I listened to his grunts of lust and foul words. I cry as I listen to your silence. I lay my head on the pillow and wish that you, Mary, would say, By day I stare at you and you catch me staring and always turn your head away. And one evening after supper, you in your chair, I stare and you stare back. The following day he is out fishing and I see you sitting on the low stone wall at the end of the bottom field looking out to sea. I join you and we say nothing your head not moving from the horizon, your hand resting on the stone. I put my hand on yours. How many times did you sleep with her? You couldn't understand. I know you lie. I held a proof in my arms. What proof? She named her Catherine. No. I cradled her, cared for her. <laughs> But each day, she was a reminder no, of no, the no, no, all lust and Mary's betrayal. A child of sin to torment me every day. Oh no, the light. <laughs> Too late, Howard. The lamp is out. No. Hello? Hello, can you see me? I'm here. Look, it was just for a second! Hello! See how they found her, Howell. Uh, I've come to save you! Is there anybody there? The ship and six men dashed on the reef. I can't see! Is there anybody there? You let the light go out. There must be someone! Oh, God, help us! Your relief. All dead. Thanks to God you. God Hello. forsaken Hello. you. How could you let this happen? How could you let this happen? How could he let this happen? Oh! There cannot be a child now. No, no, no. How could there be a child? All dead because I let the light go out. 
No, I, w I will not join you, old man. You've enough souls. I'm not asking for your sympathy. Please try to understand. Griffith brooded, thinking up new ways to torment me, knowing I had no coal, water, food, the only oil stored in the lamp room, while his body was tied to the gallery. That arm swinging, that fat finger crooked. I drifted from half day to half night, and back to day and night again. I ate the candles. I ate the soap. I sucked on a leather belt. I drank whale oil, sharing it between me and the light. Enough now for only one more day. I ate the pus that covered my hands. I wondered if my hands would drop off. Griffith and the old man waited for me and the light to succumb. As I sat there looking at you, I notice what you are holding. A shawl, knitted, but too small for your shoulder. A baby's shawl, hanging limply from your hand. the child water water everywhere and all the boards did shrink water water everywhere nor any drop to drink you relit the lamp mm. set the oil trimmed the wick yes it burns after all these days it's the only thing i i know how to do give up power i always prayed to rid myself of hope. Without it, I could live. Yet you can't give it up. Stop it, Griffith. Um, the energy for your silly games. You always look down on me. <laughs> See, I've always felt the same about you. Maybe we have, have more in common. Maybe. Is the girl with Mary? They are together. And what's she like? It was God's will that we would be without child. Griffith. I loved my Mary. With all my heart. I was not the best at showing it, but I loved her. And that night, in the dark, my heart would burst with pride that a woman such as she would lie down beside me. I felt such shame I could not provide her with a baby, though I always hoped. Each night before I put the lamp out, we would reach out and touch each other lightly on the hand. Just a simple, reassuring touch of the hand the night after you left flat home, she never reached out. Mary never touched my hand again. She loves me. Three weeks after you crept away into the night, she began to show the one thing I always wanted a joy and a curse in one tiny bundle. And where are they now? She was beautiful. And Mary doted on her. Yes, but I Griffith. could see Mary's heart was elsewhere. 
And the scaries of Cascat, perhaps. Why, where are they now? Hmm? I took the child out fishing one day. Yeah? I returned alone. You... You turned... No, 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 Griffith, no, no, you... Uh, uh, um, you, you, you said they were together. In heaven. What? What? After her baby no. died, my no. Mary was like a ship without its no, crew. No, don't say this, Griffith. She bobbed along without aim and finally capsized. Yeah. I think she died of a broken heart. She, she, she's lost. Do you know what you've done? I sat there. While the woman I loved slowly sank to the bottom of the ocean, I watched her die. All, all is false. The child was sent. Oh, God, what you a fool! My leaving flat home was a death sentence for you and Catherine. So I told him the truth, Mary. Listen, listen, Griffith. On flat home. There was something between us. I know. I said, listen to me! On that day, while you were out to sea, we sat on the low stone wall and I longed to say to her, I love you. How romantic. But I never did. Oh, God, if only I had. I stared at her, but she did not return my look. She stared out to sea. I looked at my hand, covering hers. It was the only time, the only time we touched. And I withdrew it. She just stared out to sea. That night, I packed my things and left. Oh. She was married to you, and the God's laws bound, and she knew she was carrying your child. What that would mean to you. You lie! You killed your own daughter! I am here to punish if, you! If Mary is dead, then all is mere fakery! But you're to blame! Yes, I am! I am to blame! It's true! And you! And you! But most of all, it was him! Him! He created a world where bad things happen to good people. Well, why am I not a god, Griffith? Hmm? Tell me, who says his power is greater than mine, here and now? My daughter, I'm... how could God play such a cruel joke? Because he wants us to suffer forever. <laughs> But why am I not a god, Griffith? I tell you, in the belly of this beast, I am king. Look, look at my bristles, Griffith. Can you see them? Can you see how they heal so quickly? I've got hands to touch with, hands to feel. We are subject hands. to his will, and we must submit Well, to I will. will not submit! God must have wanted me to kill the girl. We are both being punished, Griffith. You for your deeds, me for my lack of them. But only we control our future. No. They are only laws if we believe in the universe. Well, I can make a new universe, uh, Griffith. The, the light is going out. Attend it. It does not matter now, man. It does. But she is dead. And we have killed her! We have killed her! You and me, we've killed her! We've killed her! You hear me? Do you hear me? I am king here! She loved me! You are everything that is bad, Griffith. You are superstition, this putrid morality, this yoke around our necks, the reason I am still an assistant keeper, the reason we fail to love even if we are betrothed to love, the reason poor wretches hide away and baby girls are drowned. You are the reason the poor will always be hungry when there is meat aplenty. And I reject you, Griffith, and all that he is. I reject you, soul and body. There's nothing you can do, Howell. You shall die here. 
It's time for you to stop waiting and come inside, Griffith! As I hauled Griffith's coffin along the top of the rail and over, there was a stench, but also there was a strength in my arms, a lack of pain in my hands, a sense of freedom. The coffin was in good repair, apart from the hole where Griffith's blue-green arm flailed as I dragged it along the rail. The arm was useful, offering me some help to pull the coffin along and into the lamp room. If you do this, God can't forgive you. It's against all that is holy. Oh, not in my kingdom. In my octopus world, we do what we want. We are bound no more. The poor... Eat! I ate his legs. I ate his arms. I ate his lips. I ate his liver. I ate his hands. Come on, old man. I'm here. That's what you've been waiting for, huh? Rise up and do your worst. Now you know it all. He was rotten when I ate him and the parts I couldn't stomach went to Davy Jones. He's still down there, sloshing around the smalls for eternity. A self-imposed punishment. Can you hear me, Mary? I don't know what is out there after. I, I don't know where you are. But I hope you can hear me. When they find me, see what's gone on here, they will think me mad, I've no doubt. Do you understand, don't you, Mary, that I'm the sane one? I should never have left you. And as I gaze across the sea, I fly over the waves to flat home. I go beyond the blue gate and the cherry tree, and there's a candle blazing in the window. Up to the door, open. You standing before me, your eyes are bright. I'm home. You kiss me. I say, sorry I've been away for so long. And you take me by the hand into the living room and lean over the candle in the window, the light that you have been keeping for me. And you... In The Lighthouse by Alan Harris, Howell was played by Paul Rees and Griffith by Ethan Hugh Davith. The ship, it was their coffin and their grave, it was the sea. The director was James Robinson.